Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today within the Franciscan order we commemorate St. Catherine of Bologna, who was a poor Clare in the 15th century, born of a good family, that is a noble family with wealth, and she received an excellent education and was uh, eligible to enter into the life of the court and be among the elite. And yet she had a preference for uh, the ways of Christ and the gospel and gave herself instead to religious life following uh, early on at first in a monastic kind of life uh, that wasn't specifically Franciscan and then at a certain point um, deciding to follow the Franciscan path. She left behind one work which is a valuable resource to us even today in living the spiritual life and she identified seven weapons of spiritual combat. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth uh, gave a catechesis on St. Catherine of Bologna in 2010 and he listed these seven weapons. I'd just like to relate these uh, in a certain way. Well, I'm going to pick one of the seven to focus on and relate it also to the readings we heard today. So, in brief, these seven weapons are as follows. First, always to be careful and diligently strive to do good. To believe that alone we will never be able to do something truly good. To trust in God and for love of Him, never to fear in the battle against evil, either in the world or within ourselves. To meditate often on the events and words of the life of Jesus, especially on His passion and death. To remember that we must die to focus our minds firmly on the memory of the goods of heaven, to be familiar with sacred scripture, always cherishing it in our hearts so that it may give direction to all our thoughts and all our actions. So the weapon, the spiritual weapon that I wish to focus on is the second, but uh, just transitioning from that very last one, to be familiar with sacred scripture always cherishing it in our hearts so that it may give direction to all our thoughts and all our actions. And when we focus on the second weapon, to believe that alone we will never be able to do something truly good, this is a teaching actually straight out of the scripture. And even in the comments of our Lord today, though he is God, he does subordinate himself as the, as the incarnate word to the Father. His mission on earth is uh, to do the will of the Father. And he says, my Father, the Father and I are one. This is then a principle, an example, the second spiritual weapon. What we're going to say about it is derived from the sacred scripture. So uh, St. Catherine is, in effect, uh, demonstrating both the seventh, she's demonstrating the seventh in her justification for the second weapon. So we have to look to scripture and constantly keep that in mind and we'll be able then to intuitively use all of these weapons, even if you're not consciously thinking, oh, this is the second weapon or this is the fourth weapon. If you know the scripture and if we know the scripture and live it, we will be putting into practice all of these weapons. So the second weapon, to believe that alone we will never be able to do something truly good. What St. Catherine says about this, first of all, she does cite our Lord again, without me you can do nothing, from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verse 5. Without me you can do nothing. And by that, our Lord means, obviously, in the, in the realm of the moral order. There are many people who are separated from Christ, living a life of sin, 
they are able to act in this world, but not to do good. Without me, you can do nothing, meaning no good. And so, based on this truth, we should have a healthy diffidence in our own abilities, a mistrust of self. St. Catherine's not the only saint. All the saints realize this. And she says further that no one could resist successfully the fury of the infernal enemies for their cunning wickedness. Again, this teaching, she's referring to it as a weapon, and a weapon is used in combat, and the combat is spiritual, and so it's only appropriate to make a reference to spiritual enemies. There, there are three main categories of, of enemy or danger to our soul. The flesh, our own, our own brokenness, our own disordered nature is the primary uh, obstacle to our salvation. The second is the world, the spirit of the world and its seductions. The world is not under the dominion of Christ, or just it is under the dominion of Christ, but the world doesn't follow. The world resists Christ. And so when our flesh and the world don't get us, then the third is, is the spiritual enemy, Satan and his uh, minions. And so she's saying, no one could resist successfully the fury of the infernal enemies for their cunning wickedness if we depend or try to depend on our own resources and strength. We don't have it, and we don't have the intelligence or the will. Uh, so we need to trust in Christ and depend on Christ. And then when we're in Christ, we are, as long as we stay faithful to him and uh, obey his will, the devil can't do us any lasting harm. She says, if someone does confide, and she's speaking to her sisters, so she used the feminine pronoun here. If someone does confide in her own wisdom and will not do this, let her know for certain that by just judgment she will fall into great ruin. And let her be aware that this enemy is more malicious than others, even in this wickedness. So, not to trust in oneself is uh, the essence of this second of the seven weapons that she identifies. And she gives an example of a member of the clergy, a, a high up in the hierarchy, who confided to her that his experience taught him when he was acting on his own, he often felt anxiety and, and tribulation. Yet when he would listen to the counsel and the inclination of his subjects, the majority, it always turned out well for him. So here is a a principle of prudence and good judgment and humility to not depend entirely on oneself and uh, being that he's turning to the church for counsel, i.e. the faithful, uh, then God also speaks through the faithful. That's why the church recognizes the census fidelium as one of the uh, indicators of truth. And so she warns against the presumption of and pride of thinking that we can uh, know best. Rather, we need to look to our superior. She said, if this prelate uh, takes counsel from his subjects, how much more should we subjects not take counsel from our superiors? And so, uh, and that's also how Christ works. Uh, he said, he who hears you hears me, speaking to the apostles, to the leaders of the church. And so, uh, it's only proper then uh, that she gives concrete form to this principle by also uh, indicating that we are to follow the counsels and direction of our leaders within the church. And then coming back to the scripture to conclude, we heard of how the community at Antioch were the first to be called Christians. And that is the hallmark of our faith as Christians, we identify with Jesus Christ. Uh, a lot of people today in America, uh, in the new age, quote unquote, uh, are looking for spirituality without religion. And a lot of people are turning to Buddhism. And Buddhism is 
not really a religion, it's a philosophy of life. But we know that the way to salvation is not a philosophy. The way to salvation is Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. And St. Catherine then advises her sisters to follow Christ. That is really the answer of all the weapons. The second weapon, to not trust in oneself, only makes sense in view of Christ in whom we can and must trust. And that we must be willing to follow him and be identified with him. She says, The faithful servant of Christ must be ready to follow the way of the cross, since all who serve God must fight against God's enemies, and you can expect various kinds of wounds from them. Consequently, you must have the best weapons with which to fight the enemy. And so, with the Church and with the Franciscan Order, we give thanks to God for this great saint, Catherine of Bologna, who lived the Gospel and passed on from her wisdom and experience. She, she suffered many trials and tests, even from the enemy who appeared to her under the form or an appearance of Christ uh, and assailed her faith. She survived because she didn't trust in herself, but put her trust in God, and then she went on to teach her sisters, and, and through her writing, the whole church benefits from this wisdom. So let us remember, especially in this age which, which seeks to exalt uh, the ego above God, let us remember we can do nothing good with on our own, and that we must rely on Christ, and only in Him then will we be win the victory and uh, succeed in spiritual combat. Praise be Jesus and Mary.